Namaste. In this video, I shall cover the latest updates on tuberculosis in children and adolescents, which shall include National Tuberculosis Elimination Program 2020 and Guidance on WHO Updates 2021 from its document. So, let's have a brief idea about the history of tuberculosis programs in India. The Government of India first launched the National Tuberculosis Program from 1962 to 1997. This was followed by a revised National Tuberculosis Program from 1997 to 2020 and National Tuberculosis Elimination Program later in 2020 till date. It was launched via the National Strategic Plan. The WHO has its an NTB strategy which targets reducing TB deaths by 90% and 95% by the years 2030 and 2035 respectively globally in all age groups and reduce incidence of TB by 80% and 90% by the years 2030 and 2035 respectful, respectively. Now the government of India aims at TB elimination by the year 2025 itself that is 5 years ahead of World Health Organization's target of NTB. Now, National Tuberculosis Elimination Program is based on universal drug sensitivity testing. What is universal drug sensitivity testing? It is like testing every likely patient, that is every patient whom you are suspecting to have tuberculosis for mycobacterium tuberculosis and rapamycin resistance up front. That is, whenever you decide to diagnose a patient for TB, you will do the test for vampicin resistance there and then itself. So, as per the revised National Tuberculosis Program 2019, which I had discussed in detail in an earlier video of mine, we know that there were two treatment categories. The first was newly diagnosed and the other was previously treated, which included all the other patients who were not being treated for the first time. But as per the National Tuberculosis Elimination Program, since the program is based on universal drug sensitivity testing, the treatment categories will be drug sensitive or drug resistant. So, if the patient is sensitive to all the drugs, he will be referred to as drug sensitive and will be treated with the first line ATT. Or if he is resistant to any drugs, we will follow the drug resistance tuberculosis pathway and uh, he will be labeled as drug resistant. So, Actually, what happened was that the 5-drug treatment regimen which was being used in the previously treated patients of RNTCP 2019, it was found that this treatment regimen was associated with increased risk of treatment failure with amplification of resistance to other drugs. I guess you remember the 5-drug treatment regimen was 2-HRZES plus 1-HRZE plus 5-HRE which we used to give in patients who had recurrence or who were lost to follow up or who had relapsed. So now a same uh, treatment guideline has been issued whether the patient is newly diagnosed or he is previously treated depending on whether or not he is sensitive to a particular drug or he is resistant to a particular drug. So the most commonly used regime is 2-HRZE plus 4-HRE which is used in patients with pulmonary cox and in patients with simple extrapulmonary tuberculosis, for example, tuberculosis lymphadenopathy. 2-HRZE plus 10-HRE for CNS bone and joint and spinal tuberculosis and 2-HRZE plus 7-HRE for patients with disseminated tuberculosis. Just to recapitulate and uh, brush up our knowledge about the diagnostic tests for tuberculosis, they can be either direct or indirect. Direct methods are microscopy which is zeal nielsen staining and fluorescent staining. Culture which is still the gold standard, it can be done by the conventional method on the Levenstein Jensen medium or by automated liquid culture methods like Bactec Mycobacterial Growth Indicator Tube 960, MB BACT, antigen detection that is liporabinomenan antigen is detected by ELISA or dipstick and molecular methods like Gene Expert, Gene Expert Ultra, TrueNet MTB Plus, Line Probe Assay and TB Loop Mediated Isothermal Amplification and whole genome sequencing which can be first or second generation which is also referred to as next generation sequencing. The indirect methods for diagnosing tuberculosis are tuberculosis skin testing also popularly referred to as PPD or purified protein derivative testing and interferon gamma release assays 
that is the T cell sensitized with MTB and culture filtrate protein release interferon gamma which are detected by ELISA. Now coming on to our approach of how to diagnose and manage a patient with tuberculosis. The first and foremost thing is we have to clinically suspect that the patient can have tuberculosis. So if the patient has persistent fever for more than two weeks without a known cause and or persistent unremitting cough for more than two weeks and or a positive weight criteria. Positive weight criteria is either a weight loss of 5% or no weight gain in past three months despite adequate nutrition or failure of nutritional rehabilitation in babies with severe acute malnutrition. So if you suspect that the patient has tuberculosis in that case you will go for the first investigation which is a chest x-ray. Now if the chest x-ray is normal in that case you will go for checking for the patient for extra pulmonary tuberculosis because the clinical suspicion is still there. You will also go for detailed investigations which include a CECT thorax sometimes a USG thorax USG abdomen etc and may consider referral if you are not being able to get a clue but you want to start ATT in that patient. Now if the chest x-ray is abnormal there are two possibilities either it can have non-specific findings in which case you should go for a course of appropriate dosage and duration of antibiotics. The antibiotics recommended in NTEP are co-amoxiclav in the age group less than 5 years and amoxicillin in the age group more than 5 years. One must try and avoid linezolid and giving fluoroquinolone at all costs because these are antibiotics with anti-TB activity and this will promote resistance to anti-tubercular drugs. Now if the patient still has symptoms, you should subject this patient to molecular diagnosis by NTEP approved NAT. On the other hand, if the patient has uh, chest x-ray with features such highly suggestive of tuberculosis, in that case also you should subject the patient to molecular diagnosis. Now findings on chest x-ray which are highly suggestive of tuberculosis are miliary shadows, high or mediastinal lymphadenopathy and chronic fibro fibrocavitary parenchymal lesions. Now molecular diagnosis should be done on expectorated sputum, gastric aspirate or induced sputum with the help of 3% saline or hypotonic saline. If the patient has not, if the patient is not positive, in that case you will label the patient as having microbiologically confirmed tuberculosis. On the other hand, if he has not negative, in that case you will repeat a CB NAT with a better quality sample or an alternative sample for example bronchoalveolar lavage and you may also consider review from a higher center. Now if the repeat sample is also negative and there is no other likely diagnosis on further clinical and laboratory investigation, in that case you will label the patient as having clinically diagnosed or probable tuberculosis. Now a microbiologically confirmed TB case can have rifampicin resistance in which case you should again reconfirm for rifampicin resistance and follow the drug resistance TB pathway or he can have no resistance to rifampicin in which case you should treat with the first line drugs. You must also remember to offer HIV testing to all children diagnosed with tuberculosis. In patients with presumed drug resistant tuberculosis you should again subject the patient first to NART or MGIT culture and if the patient is rifampicin sensitive but you still think that the possibility of drug resistance is there, you should go for sense, drug sensitivity testing for other first line drugs. That is you will subject the patient to first line line probe assay and in which you basically test for susceptibility of, of the patient to isoniazid. So if the patient is isoniazid sensitive, you will treat the patient with first line drugs. If the patient is isoniazid resistant, in that case you will give a 6 months course of levofloxacin, rifampicin, ethambutol and pyrazinamide, all 4 drugs for all 6 months. That is a uniphasic treatment. In this, you will not divide the treatment duration into intensive phase and continuation phase. The other possibility is that the patient has rifampicin resistant tuberculosis. You should not stop at this level itself. You should subject the patient to second line line probe assay because you are now planning to treat the patient with second line drugs. Now after SLLPA, there is a possibility the patient can have fluoroquinolone and second line injectable sensitive 
tuberculosis in which case you can use both these drugs for treatment or there is a possibility that the patient can have fluoroquinolone and second line injectable resistant tuberculosis. So these are the other drugs which are used for the treatment of drug resistant tuberculosis. These are the various treatment regimens I have taken from the IAP guidelines which are used for management of patients with drug resistant tuberculosis. Now you must understand that there are four components of the national strategic plan of the government of India and these are detect, treat, prevent and build that is DTPB. Now tuberculosis preventive therapy is a part of the component prevent component of the national strategic plan and who all are eligible for giving this prophylactic or preventive therapy? First, the babies born to mothers having tuberculosis in pregnancy after ruling out congenital TB in them. Second, children less than 5 years of age who are household contacts of microbiologically confirmed pulmonary TB after ruling out active TB in them. Children and adolescents 5 to 15 years of age who are tested positive for latent tuberculosis bacterial infection and are household contacts of microbiologically confirmed pulmonary TB or are being planned to be initiated on anti-TNF alpha therapy, receiving dialysis, preparing for organ transplant or immunosuppressive drugs for more than two weeks, or they have any other immunosuppressive condition. And children with HIV who are less than 12 months of age and contacts of pulmonary TB, or who are between 12 months to 15 years of age and have no active TB. Now to diagnose latent tuberculosis bacterial infection, again you must have a clinical suspicion. Indirect methods of TB investigation like IGRA or PPD, if they are positive, you can suspect the patient can have uh, LTBI, if he, the, if, especially if he has all the risk factors which I had discussed earlier. And along with this, you must go for chest x-ray to rule out active pulmonary tuberculosis in these children. To treat, you have to give two drugs, INH and rifampicin, daily for three months along with supplementation of pyridoxin in a dosage of 10 to 25 mg per day. Now, you must remember the dosage of uh, isoniazid and rifampicin is very different in different age groups for TB preventive therapy. That is, these drugs given daily for three months and you must see it, this with caution. In age group less than 10 years, isoniazid is given in the dose of 10 mg per kg per day and rifampicin 15 mg per kg per day. And in the age group more than equal to 10 years, the dosages are 5 and 10 mg per kg per day respectively. Fixed dose combinations are daily therapy with dispersible drugs in which HR are in the ratio of 2 is to 3. They are given free of cost in public and private sectors. And these are the various fixed dose combinations to be used in different weight bands. And in this you must remember P stands for pediatric formulation. Pediatric formulation has three drugs. Isoniazid 50 mg, rifampicin 75 mg and pyrazinamide 150 mg. Ethambitol is sup supplemented separately, 100 mg dosage. And adult formulation has four drugs. 75 mg isoniazid, 150 mg rifampicin, 400 mg pyrazinamide and 275 mg ethambutol. Now, there is a guidance document on WHO updates on management of tuberculosis in children and adolescents having been released this year itself and as per this the details shall be released later in the part of this year but the guidance document which has been released as per this the treatment decision algorithm should be used in children less than 10 years of age with presumptive pulmonary tuberculosis in addition to sputum and nasopharyngeal aspirate, gastric aspirate and stool specimens can also be used to subject the patient to expert MTB RIF ultra in children less than 10 years of age with presumed pulmonary tuberculosis. A 4 month regimen, 2 HRZD plus 2 HR should be used in children less than 16 years of age with non severe presumed drug susceptible TB. In patients with MDR or resistant rifampicin resistant TB, Bedaquiline is a drug which can be used as a part of all oral bedaquiline containing shorter or longer regimens and delamanid can be used as a part of the longer treatment regimen. A 6 months intensive regimen composed of 6 months duration of all 4 drugs that is HRZE can be used as an alternative 12 months regimen in children and adolescents with microbiologically confirmed or clinically diagnosed TB meningitis. Remember, it is mentioned may be used. It is not made it mandatory. 
and decentralized and family centered integrated services should complement the centralized tb services to improve tb detection and uptake of tb preventive treatment now all this has been provided as a guidance by the world health organization but let us see what the government of india adopts from amongst these considering the very high prevalence of tuberculosis in our country and our aim of eliminating tuberculosis by the year 2025 from the country so to summarize the ntep 2020 It aims at eliminating tuberculosis by 2025 which is 5 years ahead of WHO's NTB strategy. It is based on universal drug sensitivity testing. Treatment categories are true, drug sen- two, drug sensitive and drug resistant. Latent tuberculosis bacterial infection diagnosis and treatment has been stressed upon and fixed dose combinations to be used for daily therapy in children. Thank you for watching and we all know sharing is caring. Thank you.